the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is Psalm for the day that is coming to you from the Redeemed Christian Church of God here in Abuja. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, you are the King of glory and the God of mercy. We have come in obedience to the call for which you have called us. Father, magnify your name. Glorify your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 129, verse 4, which reads, The Lord is righteous. He has cut in pieces the cords of the wicked. This psalm may have been written after Israel's return from captivity. It is one of 15 psalms that begins with a song of degree or a song of ascent. It's a psalm of affliction and it's a psalm of God's deliverance of Israel. It's a psalm of victory. It's a psalm of God's faithfulness. Verse 1 and 2 of the psalm helps us to appreciate the intensity of the affliction that Israel had faced. Many a times the psalm said, they have afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, many a times they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. Although this is not a psalm of David, the, song, the story of Israel here mirrors that of David. From his youth, he was afflicted by his senior brothers to whom he took food at the word for. They mocked and afflicted him because he was brave and desired to take on Goliath. You see, because he desired to rescue Israel from the humiliation and abuse of their enemy. He was afflicted from his youth when his father in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16 did not even call on him while his siblings were called to be presented before prophet Samuel. He was afflicted because even his father did not consider him qualified to be king of Israel. He was afflicted many times by Saul who sought to kill him for no just cause. He was afflicted by his wife, Saul's daughter, who mocked him for dancing for God. He was afflicted by his son, Absalom. And like the testimony of Israel in verse 2, he has this, we have this to declare concerning him. Yet, none of his enemies ever prevailed against him because of the mercy and protection of the Almighty God. Child of the living God, behold my prayer for you today that all those who, are, who have afflicted you will not prevail against you. God's mercy will always speak for you to grant you eternal victory in the mighty name of Jesus. The verse 4, which is our verse of interest, acknowledges two facts. The first is that, that God is righteous, that the Almighty God is righteous. Secondly, that God cuts to pieces the ropes of the wicked. In the first point, the psalmist celebrates the very essence of the Almighty God, his righteousness. Righteousness is defined as a state of being morally correct, and justifiable, or a state of being upright. Brethren, our God is indeed righteous, glorious, upright, and all powerful. He is able to deliver and to save. The righteous of our God, the righteousness of our God demands that we also be righteous in the way we live, live our life. The Bible declares in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9. That because you have chosen righteousness and rejected iniquity, therefore, God, even your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness and set you above hell. It's a lifestyle that comes with divine promise. Isn't it beautiful? That our God promises us a life full of gladness and has promised to set us above other fellow. May this be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. May this be your portion in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Again, Proverbs chapter 11 verse 8 declares that the righteous man is saved from evil. And you know what? 
the wicked is brought in to replace him. Why? Because God has promised to help and to protect the righteous. Saying again, that they shall not be put to shame that put their trust in him and that do his will. The Bible declares in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2, that when the wicked are in authority, the people weep, <laughs> which is the opposite of when the, weak, the righteous are in authority. The reason of, for this is obvious, that the righteous is guided by the fear of God to do justice, to show mercy, and to love. Brethren, the holy book confirms to us in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 33, that the righteous man is so blessed that he leaves a transgenerational inheritance for his children's children. This is because his inheritance is of God and is from God. An indestructible blessing from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. A blessing that speaks to eternity like the eternal blessing of Abraham. Finally, the Bible declares in Proverbs 14.34 that righteousness exalts a nation and that sin is a reproach to any people. A righteous nation is exalted because it is characterized by responsible leadership. The second part of our psalm declares that God cuts into pieces the cuts or the ropes of the wicked. The Almighty God is the everlasting enemy of the wicked. We've already seen in Proverbs 11, 8, that the wicked is brought in as a substitute for the righteous in the time of trouble. The wicked are agents of the devil. The Bible declares in, in it, that the devil, that the Bible declares that the devil's business is to go through and fro looking for who to devour. Job chapter 1, verse 7. The wicked kills. The wicked destroys peace in homes and relationships. First John chapter 3, verse 8 declares that Christ was made manifest to destroy the works of Satan, walking through wicked people. It was the wicked who set a trap for Daniel against the king. It was the wicked Hannah, Haman, who sought to destroy the people. Esther chapter 3 and chapter 4. This is why the Bible de declares in Isaiah 48 verse 22 that there is no peace for the wicked. Brethren, the peace will never be ascribed to the wicked person. May all your enemies go into captivity today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Almighty God is determined to deny peace to the wicked because of their works of evil. Hence, the Bible confirms in Isaiah 59, verse 19, that whenever the wicked rise up like a flood, even the Almighty God, in His infinite mercy, will raise a standard against it. God cuts the rope of the wicked to set up free from bondage and captivity. Even where we have true personal recklessness permitted the wicked access to our homes, personal lives, and state, the Almighty God promised because of his mercy, to lose the bound of slavery. Isaiah 49, 24 to 26 confirms this, when God promised that even the lawful captive shall be delivered. This is why Christ came and died on the cross, to free us from the agents of wickedness. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8 declares, that for this purpose was the Son of Man made manifest, to destroy the works of Satan. Christ reaffirmed this in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, saying, that the Spirit of the Almighty God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to, be, to heal the heart, the brokenhearted, and to preach deliverance to the captive, and to recover the sight of the blind, and to set at liberty all of them that are good. Rejoice therefore, my friends, for God is here to do us good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this opportunity that you have perpetually given to us to reach out to your people. May your people find enlightenment through this world. And may we all make heaven together. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, most precious.